it is my pleasure to present to you my good friend and Cooley's great friend, Professor Bob Stocker. After that introduction, I should sit down while I'm ahead, I think. <laughs> President of the Duke, members of the board, fellow faculty members, family members, guests, most importantly, the members of the Bushrod Washington graduating class. Let me begin by expressing what the members of the graduating class and their spouses, family members, and significant others are thinking as they are sitting through this formal recognition of survival. Yeehaw! <laughs> Hallelujah! I am the first to acknowledge, based upon my recollection of my own and my four daughters' graduations, that 10 years from now, if not a lot sooner, most of you will have forgotten what I say here today. What I remember both as a graduate and as a parent of graduates is the relief that the formal education journey was over, maybe. There was survival. The sun was shining. And the future presented opportunity as well as the ever-present uncertainty and challenge, and, of course, paying off the student debt. Let me be candid. You are entering a difficult job market and an uncertain economic horizon. The bad news is that this is not going to end or change overnight. That being said, let me put this in a proper perspective for there really is great news. My practice has taken me to Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Asia, South America, and the Middle East. Each time I have returned from these locations, I have returned with the firm conviction that I am fortunate to live in the greatest country in the world. The United States The United States is the land of opportunity, and that's what I want to talk about today. Your success in upward mobility is, de is not dependent upon where you were born, your sex, your color, what ethnic group you belong to, what religion you embrace, what social class you came from or any of the other determining factors that exist in most of the rest of the world. By the way, you can thank lawyers for making this a reality in this great country. Rather, your success and upper mobility is largely dependent upon your commitment, your creativity, and your willingness to continue to grow intellectually as well as utilize the skills you have assimilated during your educational endeavors. Last week I was engaged in a discussion with one of my law partners regarding a very prominent Lansing lawyer who is in another law firm. That lawyer was born in a European refugee camp at the end of the Second World War. His parents immigrated with him after the war with only the clothes on their backs. Today, one generation removed from a very restrictive European heritage, that lawyer has become extremely successful and is enjoying the fruits of the opportunities presented in this country. This is a very common story. Some of you can tell this story. That is why persons from all over the world want to come to the United States because it really is the land of opportunity. So how does this relate to you and your future? 
your law degree opens a greater variety, I want to emphasize this, opens a greater variety of doors and related opportunities than any other graduate degree available from higher education today. And don't forget that fact. You have the analytical and intellectual tools to make a difference. You have the opportunity to become a leader in a wide variety of ways and in many diverse fields of endeavor. Let me give you a few relevant statistics. While there are over 1,100,000 lawyers in the United States, sounds like a lot, it's about one-third of 1% 1 of the population, only approximately 760,000 are actually practicing law. The, most of the rest of them are engaged in other productive careers based upon their law degree. It gets back to the issue of opportunity. That is because law degrees opened so many different career doors. Take politics for an example. 26 of the 43 men who have served as President of the United States were lawyers. Over half of the United States Senators are lawyers. Over one-third of the members of the House of Representatives are lawyers. These kinds of numbers persist at the state and the local level of politics also. Our federal, state, and local bureaucracies are heavily populated with lawyers. Of course, the judicial branch in, of government, judicial, judicial branches of all elements of government, and the faculty of our nation's law schools are composed of lawyers. Perhaps most of important in all, it, that has often been forgotten, is the fact that many of the persons who are sitting in the executive seat, suites in our nation's corporations and nonprofit organizations are lawyers. My point is a simple one. Your opportunities in the world are mainly limited by your world view. The broader the world view, the broader the opportunities. Let me give you a real life example of the success of creativity and determined perseverance that has had a direct impact on each and every one of you in the graduating class. Michigan former Chief Justice Thomas Brennan had a vision. Starting a new law school that would take a new approach to legal education, that would open up legal education to a much broader range of individuals. This vision resulted in the formation of the Thomas M. Cooley Law School in 1972. Larry Nolan is a graduate of the first class of uh, the Thomas Cooley Law School. Justice Brennan, Chief Justice Brennan, was met with fierce resistance by the establishment and by the American Bar Association. He has written a series of articles about the battle for recognition that the law school fought over many years. It's this publication. It is very, very interesting reading. Take some time someday to read it. Perseverance against entrenched biases resulted in final victory. Today, his vision of the appropriate role of a law school has resulted in the Thomas Cooley Law School becoming a leader, a leader in providing minorities and men and women seeking to start a second career midlife the opportunity to become lawyers. And some of you individuals fit those descriptions. Moreover, this vision by Chief Justice Vision uh, uh, Brennan was the get genesis of the development of professionalism programs that have now been adopted and, imp and implemented in law schools throughout the country and have been recognized for their significance by the American Bar Association, the very organization that was such a doubter in the early years. There is absolutely nothing 
that prevents each of you, each of you, from having your own vision of a better future in which you play a key role. You control your vision. You control your work ethic. You control your commitment to a cause or a result. Success comes through effort and perseverance. Let me illustrate this another way by quoting Michael Jordan, not a lawyer, but one of the greatest basketball players to ever play the game, and I quote, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life, and that's, that is why I succeed." End quote. Belief in yourself, hard work, commitment, perseverance. Most of you will actually practice law. Some of you will focus on righting the world's wrongs. Some of you will become plaintiff's lawyers or civil or criminal defense lawyers or prosecuting attorneys or domestic relation lawyers or business lawyers, having taken my business classes, or one of the many other old or emerging or future practice specialties, the ones that don't even exist today. Some of you will become leaders in government agencies. Some of you will become judges or law professors. Some of you will enter the business world. Some of you will even become politicians. Some of you will make a lot of money and discover that money does not solve everything. Some of you may go broke, restart, and then achieve tremendous success the second time around. One thing is virtually guaranteed. You will all use your legal training in some fashion throughout your career. Regardless of your chosen path, I have a few words of advice based upon over 40 years of hard, cold experience. Uh, take my, thought, my thoughts for what they are worth, but ignore them, frankly, at your peril. The world is a skeptical place. You have to earn your way up the ladder. It takes hard work, long hours, and plenty of commitment. You are not an exception to the rule. Your personal life will suffer at times. It will be a challenge to balance the professional life with the personal life. You will not always succeed in finding that balance. In fact, you may never find the balance, but keep trying. In your professional endeavors, you are constantly creating an impression of yourself to the persons that you are providing professional services to and to the persons who are your co-workers and superiors. Treat everyone, everyone, with respect and as though that individual is the key to your professional success. This, this is really very, very important. Your career, career, your career will be filled with surprises. Clients, co-workers, and superiors you believed were the key to your success and upper mobility often are not. Clients, co-workers, and superiors you casually dismiss as unimportant often turn out to be the most important persons in your, persons in your career. If you approach everyone you have contact with in your professional and personal life as though that person is critical to your success, as a professional, then you have maximized your opportunity for success on both a professional and personal level. You are entering an exciting, rapidly changing marketplace that favors creativity, marketing skills, and an expansive view of what you are able to do. I want to take a step back in time to illustrate this point. In 1440, the world was dramatically and irrevocably changed by Johannes Gutenberg's invention of the printing press. 
For the first time in history, books were available to the masses. Books caused a fundamental awakening in learning, thought, and action. Books played a key role in the Reformation, the Age of Discovery, and the revolutions in science, industry, and political theory. In the past 20 years, we have witnessed and are living in a similar fundamental and equally dramatic change that has shrunk the world by knocking down barriers in every direction. It is called the Internet. The Internet's presence is manifested by the Blackberry, the iPhone, the iPad, and their ever-changing progeny. These instruments instantly cross borders without reference to law or custom. They create 24-hour days. They organize flash mobs. They encourage occupations. They facilitate riots at embassies. They embarrass British royalty. They also allow Drudge to let us know about all the stupid things that people do that we never knew about before, but now is, uh, is given you know, uh, on the Drudge Report to everybody, for everybody to see. We curse these modern instruments of communication and information and derisively call our Blackberry a Crackberry. Yet we are wedded to them because they are now our access to the world. But these generation, generalizations miss the point and the importance of the Internet to each of you as graduates with a law degree. You are the next generation of professional and entrepreneurs. That is where the game-changing Internet comes into play and becomes a tool for success. The Internet is an enabler for each of you. It permits you to develop, expand, convert, and market your professional endeavors, whatever they may be, into a, not just a local, but a regional, national, and international presence, if you have the will, the creativity, the nerve, and the commitment. The Internet has opened and expanded the playing field in incredibly diverse ways. It enables you to compete head-to-head -head, head on a local, regional, national, and international basis, regardless of where you live and work. It allows you to develop specialty practices that serve as clients on a local, regional, national, and international basis. It allows you to continually develop, enhance, and expand your professional and entrepreneurial skills. So what should your roadmap to success be? Only you can answer that question. After all, it is your life. First, you have to make an honest assessment of your strengths and weaknesses. Play to your strengths and work on your weaknesses. View every opportunity that presents itself, no matter how small and seemingly insignificant, to be your potential breakthrough. Opportunity, what, what a great word. What a challenging word. Your law degree does not guarantee that you will succeed in each of your endeavors but I can assure you that you will miss 100% of the opportunities that you never pursue. But remember this, there will be no instant gratification. You must be patient and persevere. It is not the last blow that accomplishes the task, but rather all that has come on before. In life, the strongest, the biggest, or the most intelligent does not, being the strongest, the biggest, or the most intelligent, does not guarantee success. You all know examples of that. It is those who, those who develop state-of-the-art skills and adapt quickly to changing environments that have the edge for not just surviving, but also for prospering. When you settle on the path to take, make sure that it is what you really want to do and not what someone else wants you to do or has told you to do. Settling on the real path you want to take may take time and involve some trial and error. That is perfectly okay. It's part of life. Remember that the end game is to be successful and happy, not successful 
and miserable. Your legal training has provided you with a broad range of skill sets, including the productive use of the internet as an effective professional career enhancement tool that the generations ahead of you do, do not have. Use those skill sets wisely and to your advantage. By becoming a part of the Busherod Washington graduation class, you have each demonstrated that you have the intelligence, the skills, the moxie, and the commitment to rest the challenges you are now facing and may face in the future to the floor and to seize the tremendous opportunities that are open to you. Now, go out in the world and kick butt. <laughs>